Hello, so we're going to use reference angles to evaluate trig functions. So the basic, basic step. So to first find the reference angle theta prime, which we did yesterday, and then you're going to evaluate the trig function for theta prime. We'll do that today using a quick little diagram of a triangle. And then in step three, you know if it's positive or negative based on this chart over here. And there are some patterns in the chart that if you study the chart and think about what why we get a positive and negative then you don't really have to memorize every single thing in the chart and it will make sense so we'll talk a little bit more about that most likely in class actually so let's do the basics right now so first we want to find the reference angle theta prime and let's just look at where this angle actually is so if you're trying to find the tangent of negative 240 just remember that negative goes in a clockwise direction. And so I would think of this as, okay, so if I'm starting right here, then that would be 90, and this would be 180. Negative 270 would be up here, which means we've gone a little too far if we go that far. But it is 30 less than that, and 60 more than 180. So it's going to be somewhere around right here. And the reference angle has to do with how, how far do you have to go from that angle to the x-axis. And it's going to be positive. So just think about the physical distance right here. So this right here is negative 240 degrees. And right here, between negative 180 and negative 240, is a distance of 60 degrees. So theta prime equals 60 degrees. And let's draw a quick little triangle just to kind of help visualize this. Remember that that's a, one of our special triangles that you really should memorize, but if you don't quite have it memorized, you can also draw a diagram to help you figure this out. So this is 60, and this is 30. It's not exactly drawn to scale, but just remember that the smallest side will open across from the smallest angle. So that means that 1 is going to be over here, and then square root of 3 will be on the side that's a little bit larger, and the hypotenuse is actually 2 times the smallest side. So this will be 2. And if we're setting up a basic ratio here, so tangent would be opposite over adjacent. In this case, that would be square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. And we have to figure out if it's positive or negative. And to do that, let's look at our chart. So notice that we are in quadrant 2, and it says that tangent in quadrant 2 is negative. So this is going to be negative square root of 3. And that is the trig function right there. The tangent of negative 240 degrees is negative square root of 3. Okay, let's look at the next one. So actually, there's a little typo here. I meant to have 9 pi over 4. So we've got cosine of 9 pi over 4. And so let's just look at what that means over here. So I know that radians are still kind of new to us. And just focus on the bottom of the fraction really quick. If, it's, if there's a 4 on the bottom, I want you to think, okay, if we go this far, it is pi, and if we start right here, and if we're dividing into 4 pieces, then kind of sketch out just a little dotted line here. So pi divided by 4 means that's the size of the piece that we're talking about. And let's just kind of extend this down here, just to give us sort of a visual. And so all together, if we have 2 pi, then there would be 8 pieces total in 2 pi. And this is 9 pi over 4, so we've got, if you count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That goes all the way around, and that turns into 2 pi. And then we just have one more piece after that, so it's going to be right here. Let me erase some of these extra marks. Okay, and we're really just worried about 
the reference angle. So the reference angle is just this distance to the x-axis. And so one piece would be essentially pi over 4 is our reference angle. And so now we're going to say, okay, theta prime equals pi over 4. We're not even really thinking about the original at this point. So let's draw a quick little triangle. And there are also charts showing all of these angles. This is 90. So just remember that pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees, if that helps you visualize it. And that would mean that this side is the same as this side. And then the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. And now let's think about if we take cosine of 45 degrees, that would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And so this would be So cosine pi over 4 equals 1 over square root of 2. We're not allowed to have square root of 2 on the bottom. So let's rationalize that denominator. We get square root of 2 over 2. And now don't forget to decide if it's positive or negative. Notice that we are in quadrant 1. And bonus, everything in quadrant 1 is positive. And so it's square root of 2 over 2. All right, let's look at some other information that can help. So this is a unit circle, and some of the values are already written in. And this is based on those right triangles that we were just talking about. So for instance, notice that 45, if this were a triangle, then this point right here would be based on square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 would be both distances, the x and the y. And I just wanted to practice looking at these values and noticing how they kind of repeat, except change their negatives and positives just a little. And so we're just going to finish filling this out based on patterns. And so notice that to get this one right here, you could look at 60 degrees on the other side of it, and notice that instead of going to the right one-half, you'd be going to the left one-half. So this one's going to be negative one-half square root of 3 over 2, because it's still positive for the y part of it. And then the next one's going to be, instead of, so it's comparing to this, but instead of positive square root of 2 over 2, it's negative for the x. might just draw a little arrow to it. So negative square root of 2 over 2 comma, square root of 2 over 2, and then 150. Just use kind of that same pattern. We can go ahead and fill this in. You can also be filling this in yourself. So instead of positive square root of 3 over 2, we have negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. That matches up with this one. And the point right here is just going to be negative 1, 0. Those ones go pretty fast. Let's do all of those real quick. This one's going to be 0, negative 1. And now look at 210. And notice it pretty much matches up with this one here, except our y value is now negative. So now we have negative square root of 3 over 2, and then negative 1 half. And then next we have. This one matches up with the 45 degree ones. So we've got negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then down here, we have negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. Almost finished. And then 300 degrees is just on the other side of the x-axis. I'm sorry, the y-axis. So we end up with positive 1 half and then negative square root of 3 over 2. That one is right there. A little squishy to get these to all fit in. And then this is the one that compares to 45 degrees. So we've got, this time we have a positive x, so it's square root of 2 over 2, and then negative square root of 2 over 2. 
last one. And this one's going to be positive square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Okay, and that can also help you, so this helps you with the positive and negative chart a little bit. Just think about in quadrant 1, everything is positive because x is positive and y is positive. In quadrant 2, sine is positive because the upward part is positive and the hypotenuse is always positive. And those kinds of patterns can help you remember the chart that we have over here on this page. Alright, that's it for today, and I'll talk to you later.